guys, welcome to my craft room. I'm Leo from Inky Memories and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'm going to be showing you how to complete the Simply Citrus card kit in the current annual catalogue. So it's here on page 7 in the latest catalogue. And as you can see this is an all-inclusive card kit. So this one comes with absolutely everything that you need to put this together. And it includes 15 cards, so there'll be three each of five different designs. The kit itself comes in this box and everything that you need is all included in here. As you can see we have a stamping spot which is like a mini ink pad for you and this one is in Knight of Navy. The stamp set that you need is included as well and this one features citrus fruits and a couple of different sentiments as well. And then you also get the pack of all of the paper and twine and everything else that you need all together including a clear block as well. So first of all I'm just going to snip this open so you can get all the goodies out. So you'll get a sheet of dimensionals, like I said, your clear block for your stamps, there are your envelopes, and these are lined with some really gorgeous patterns inside them as well. You'll have all of your card bases, so there are these. And these are featuring quite a few of the new in colours for us as well. And then those are the last ones. You also then have all of these pre-printed and die cut pieces that help you to put the cards together. So as you can see, these are all easy just to punch out when you need to. And they're all printed in the same theme as the kit. There's a couple of different versions of those. And then you'll have these pieces, which are where you would stamp your sentiments as we go through. You have adhesive as well. So these are just glue dots. They're nice and simple to use. You just pick one up and then take off the backing and stick things down. And then finally, we have some embellishments. So we've got some twine here, as well as some small flower sequins. The other thing that you'll have is this book. And basically this will show you exactly how to put all of the cards together. So these are the five designs that we'll be completing today. And then inside it goes through um, what the kit includes. It tells you where to find a video from Stampin' Up! directly on how to put this together. A couple of little tips and the coordinating colours. Okay, so we had a slight technical issue there. It is a very warm day here in South Wales and apparently my camera overheated and stopped recording so apologies we shall pick up from where we left off. So what I'm going to do first of all and what I always do when I'm putting together a kit is just move all of the pieces out of the way of my workspace. And I like to start by getting all of the stamping out of the way first of all. So the eagle eyed amongst you will probably notice that I have already stamped some of these sentiments. I kind of got a bit eager and kept going without realising, unfortunately, that the camera had stopped, but we shall continue from here. So I've already stamped um, two of the sentiments. So for these two cards, um, I've stamped the Just a Note sentiment on the circle and one of these tag type shapes. So I'm going to carry on stamping the rest of the sentiments from here. So the next one I will do is this one here, Thanks for Being You. So I'm just going to peel it off the base. And I'm going to lay the stamp um, stamp side down, so the flat side is facing up, down on my grid paper. And if you can hear clacky claws on the floor, that's my beautiful dog Ruby who has just come to say hi. <laughs> so lay the stamp down. Um, this allows the stamp to go back to its normal neutral position, so it's not sort of flexed or moved in any way. Pop your block straight down onto the stamp to pick it up. And there you go. You have your stamp mounted on your block. And then using this tiny little ink spot, what we're going to do is just very gently and lightly tap the ink onto the surface of the stamp. So you don't need to sort of push or smush 
the ink into the stamp at all. It's just very, very light taps on the surface until you have the ink evenly distributed all over the surface. I'm going to bring in my sentiment piece. And for this, we're going to be stamping in this other sort of tag down here. So I'm going to turn the block over. And with this, your block is clear, your stamp is clear, so you can see exactly where you're stamping. Hold it sort of over the tag and line it up where you want it to be. And then all you do is you just press straight down and then lift straight back up. I'm just going to repeat that on the other tag, so just two more times. So again, taking my stamping spot, just very lightly tapping the ink over the surface of the stamp. And then line it up over the tag, press straight down and lift straight back up. And last one. Now with stamping, if you've never stamped before, if this is your absolute first time, you have this gorgeous grid paper or if you have scrapped paper underneath your work surface, just test out stamping on that first, you know. Give it a go, get used to the motion, the the you know, the straight down and straight back up until you're comfortable and happy that you're gonna be able to do it on your for real project. But at the end of the day, this is a handmade card. It's not meant to look pristine and perfect. You know, a couple of little flaws are certainly not going to hurt anyone and it just adds to the handmade vibe of what you're sending out. So I'm just going to clean off my stamp. I'm using my Simply Chamois here just to get the ink off. Now one thing you will notice with this, because we are using quite a dark blue ink today, um, the stamp does stain. So you'll notice all of the red pigments um, from the ink do stain onto the photopolymer stamp here. It doesn't hurt the stamp in any way whatsoever. And as you can see, it doesn't leave a residue when you stamp it. There is nothing coming off it. So it is clean, it is just slightly stained. And it's just something that happens if you use sort of darker blue inks or red or pink inks on photopolymer stamps. I'm just gonna pop that one back and we'll move on to the next one. So this one says, way to go. So again, I'm just going to lay the stamp down flat on my surface, pick it up with my block, bring back in my sentiment pieces, and this time we're stamping onto one of these nice sort of straight labels, and we just do exactly the same again. chamois here is one of my absolute favorite tools in my craft room at the moment it's literally just a thin sort of rubbery sponge I can't even really describe it it's very similar to a chamois like you would use in the car but a much thicker version all you do is you just wet it with water wring it out and then you can just literally wipe your stamp straight onto it to get all of the ink off just like that you can even if you would prefer leave the stamp down there and take your chamois to your stamp if that's easier. I tend to do it this way and I just keep it in one of our clear stamp cases just to keep it nice and moist while I'm working. Okay, move the stamp back. And then the last sentiment that we're going to be stamping is probably one of my favourite actually. And this one says, hello sunshine. And it is definitely a sunny day today lots of sunshine coming in through the window which is why we had so many problems with the camera <laughs> switching off my uh, craft room faces the morning sun and uh, the sun is streaming in through the window here and I've had to put a fan on just to keep my camera cool enough to be able to continue with this today okay so same again ink up the stamp Press it straight down, lift straight back up. And I'm just going to finish these off. So, if we 
we go back to the book and we shall have a look then what the next steps are going to be for us. So again I'm going to carry on doing all of the stamping so all of that part is done um, first of all and then I'm going to look at assembling all of the cards later. So what you will notice on some of these, um, especially these two here and this one down here, is that this die cut background piece has actually also been stamped on. Um, so I'm just going to pull those pieces back in from over here. If I can pick them up. There we go. So there's a couple of different parts to this. So if we start with this one first of all, which is the one for this card here. So as you can see, they've stamped the outline onto the lemon and also onto the leaves. So I'm going to leave those all in there for the time being. And bring back in my clear block and my stamp set. So first of all, I'm going to get the lemon stamped. So again, I'll peel it off the backing plastic and I'm just going to lay it down so it can go back to its normal neutral position and pick it back up on my block. I'm bringing this in. If you want to sort of line this up and figure it out before you start inking it up, that can help. And with this one, you'll notice that one edge is more rounded and one edge is more pointed and that lines up with the image on here. So you've got a more rounded side here and a more pointed side on this side. So you're going to be stamping it that way around and you're going to repeat it on all four of the lemon images on this piece and then you've got three of those to do. come as a pair so it's all just the one stamp so two leaves I do like it when you can do two things at once pick that up with my block and we shall continue stamping <laughs> stamping done on this piece we're going to move on now to this one and there's quite a bit of stamping that we're going to be doing on this one so first of all we're going to start on this one here and we are going to stamp the majority of the leaves it's up to you how many you want to do if you just want to highlight a couple you can do I think I probably will do all of them because I really like how it looks on this piece <music> uses the leaf stamp is this one here. Now as you can see these pieces did fall out of their backing but that's absolutely fine. Again it's not going to hurt your project. You might actually find it easier to stamp the pieces when they're not all still 
in the backing sheets like this so if you want to punch them out before you stamp absolutely do not a problem at all <laughs> segmented orange let me show you that one pop this one back on the backing sheet and we're going to be using this one here so again just pop it down on your surface and pick it up with your block and this time on these three sheets we're just going to be outlining these pieces of citrus block I'm actually going to stamp a couple of my envelopes I have a rule in my craft room no naked envelopes and this is quite a cute little stamp so I'm going to pop this onto a couple so the same applies ink up your stamp pop it down and pull it straight up and it just gives a little bit of fun for the outside of the envelope so that when people receive it they know they're getting something cute and handmade and fun and not another bill and the last piece of stamping that we're going to be doing um, for the outside of our cards is using this little flower stamp here. Just to add a little bit more interest. So I'm just going to pick that up on my block. And we're going to be using these pieces again. And we're just going to add a couple of clusters of flowers around the edge. can use your own creative license with this one and pop them wherever you choose. Okay, and that is all of the stamping that we need to do. So again, I'm just going to clean off my stamp, make sure my block is all nice and clean as well. And pop the stamp away. Okay. So, if I bring this book back in so you can have a quick look at the instructions on here. So we're going to start with this card, since it is top left, you might as well. So what we're going to need, and the way that I find is easiest to do this when you're putting together kit cards again, is to first of all bring in all of the pieces that you're going to need. So we have our card bases, these gorgeous lemons. We have these green banner pieces. We need the Just a Note sentiment. So I'm just going to pop those out, and these just pop straight out of their backing sheets nice and easily. we need on here is a couple of embellishments. So on this one, as it can see here, it says we need 63 centimeters of twine cut in half. And if you can see on here, we also have some sequins and it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five across this card. So let me grab those from here. With the twine just find the end so you can start the spool so 25 inches or 63 centimeters and i'm just going to use my grid paper to measure that here so using the ruler along the bottom that is roughly 31 
and half centimeters there. So double that up. So this is the amount that you need for one card and we need three. So I'm just gonna do this two more times. <laughs> that bit off the spool and then cut all of the loops because all of your pieces of twine need to be in half. Like so. So first of all we'll take one of the card bases and these are already pre-scored for you so you can see down the middle. What I'm going to do is just fold it in half. I'm going to take a bone folder and just burnish the score. Now this just, um, it kind of seals that score in. It makes it so that it wants to stay folded and so that it will stand up nice and neatly for you once you've assembled your card as well. And then we'll start putting the pieces together. So we have our banner and our sentiment. Two pieces of twine. We have a quick peek, it will tell you also on here which kind of adhesive to attach each of the pieces. So you have two adhesive, these are your stamping dimensionals and these are your adhesive dots. So if we have a look on here, number two is a deer using adhesive dots. So this is for all of the sequins and for your twine. So then with your dimensionals, that's number three, that's going to be your piece here and then also your background piece. So I'm just going to flip these over, peel up a couple of dimensionals, and you don't need to absolutely fill your pieces with dimensionals. For a piece this length I would say one at either end would be more than enough, like so. And the same on here. Just one dimensional pad at either end. Now you just peel off the backs of these and then lay them onto your card front. Let's try and line it up in the middle. Get it straight if you can and press it down. And then this piece just layers over the top. So again, try and get it in the centre. And pop it down. And then with this we're going to tie what I like to call an air bow. So you're not tying it around anything, you're just tying it in midair. And I'm not especially good at tying bows, especially not on camera, so this may or may not work. <laughs> So I've got a short piece of tail, I've made a loop, I'm going to pop that around. I'm holding the tails, just pull it into a rough bow. It probably won't look pretty when you first do it, but that's where you can then shimmy the ends and pull it to how you want it to be. And this is going to sit just here, so you can sort of measure it if you want to, see how it looks. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm just going to snip the tails off here. And then for this I'm going to use some adhesive dots to pop this on. I'm just going to peel one of these dots off. And just pop it on the back of the bone. In fact, let's do two. One on either side of that central knot, like so. Just smush them in so they're nice and stuck. And then you want to peel off the backing papers. You've still got the glue dot stuck on there. And do that for both sides. There we go. And then taking the card, we're just going to tuck the edge of the bow just under the white piece that we've stamped our sentiment onto. So it sits just like that. And then the last thing to do for this card is just to attach a couple of sequins. These do have um, a sort of a right way and a wrong way around. If you lay them down, you can probably see here, 
they're sort of flatter in the middle and the petals are coming up and it's probably going to be easiest to put the adhesive on that side. So what I'm going to do is just pop one of my adhesive dots on the back. Peel off the backing paper and then pop this onto the front of my card. So I'm going to have a couple up here. Just under where our bow sits and then the others I'm going to put towards the bottom of here. When designing um, cards and projects, when you're adding embellishments like this, odd numbers work better than even numbers, so threes or fives often look better um, and sort of more finished and more pleasing to the eye um, than if you had sort of two or four. And it often looks good to arrange them in a loose sort of triangle formation. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to pop one up here. I'm going to pop one a little bit further down on a diagonal. And then the last one I'm going to pull just slightly down from those two. Just like so. And there is our first card, finished and ready to send. So I'm going to move on to the next card, which is going to be this Calypso Coral Base. So again, fold and burnish your score line, just to give you a nice sharp crease. And for this one, the pieces that we are going to need are our stamped lemons, so these banners here. Just going to pop those out. We're also going to need our Hello Sunshine sentiment. The background piece uses one of these Knight of Navy banners. So we just need three of these. Like so. And then again, we're going to be needing some twine. This time we need 40 centimetres, which is the length of my ruler along the base of my grid paper. So, just going to measure that and cut off three pieces of that length. And of course we will also be needing some more of the sequins. So again, we'll start by layering up our card. And first of all, we're going to want to put down the large banner piece, more towards the bottom right corner of the card. So I'm going to pop some more dimensionals on the back of here. This time I'm going to take them one in each corner, just bring them slightly in from the corner so they stay nice and hidden from your project. I'm going to take the backs off those. I often find it helps if you line up your base piece with the lines on your grid paper. That can help you then to make sure everything is nice and square as you're layering things together. Once you're happy, pop that piece down. And then next up we're going to pop our blue banner 
two I stuck across here towards the bottom. And this time I'm actually going to use a couple of these adhesive dots for this one. So I'm just going to pop three dots across the back of here. And peel the backs off. Using the two different adhesives can give your layers a different look. So the dimensionals, as you can see here, kind of make this stand up from the base of your card to give it a bit of height. If you want things to lay a bit flatter, then just the glue dots will be the better way to do that for you. So again, line up your card base with your grid lines. Decide roughly where you want this to go. And once you're happy with the position, just smooth it down. We're going to take our Hello Sunshine sentiment. And this time I will be using dimensionals again on the back of this. Just two on this should be plenty. To try and line this up so it is centered on the card as much as possible and also along our blue banner I think I'm pretty happy with that there we'll take one of our pieces of twine and we're going to tie another air bow really testing my skills today so just hold the tail and make a loop Pop that around and through and then holding both tails and both loops just pull it together to form your bow and again you can make this as big or as small as you want you can leave the tails nice and long if you like that look on the front of your card or you can pull it a little bit shorter this one is going to sit just under the edge of your sentiment piece here so I think I'm actually going to take these loops a little bit smaller. Just pull those through. There we go. And again, I'm going to use a couple of adhesive dots for this. Just either side of the knot, just to anchor it to our card. Pick off the backing paper to expose the glue dot underneath just like so so you can see the glue dot just on the back of that and then we want to tuck the glue dot um, and the central knot under the sentiment piece so you actually can't see it so it can help sometimes if you use your snips if you just pop that right on the end you can actually use those then to help you position the knot where you want it to be. Push down and pop it into place like so. And again, I'm just going to snip the tails off the twine here. And then I'm going to pop a couple of sequins on. This time I'm going to use three. So again, still sticking with those odd numbers. Don't pick them up on your finger while you're doing it. Okay, peel the back off. So what I'm going to do first of all is pop one down here. This will be one of the points of my triangle. And then the other two I'm going to put sort of further up the card. So one up here. And then one just in here and there we go that is our second card finished and ready to send
Moving on then to our next card. This one is going to be using this gorgeous Mango Melody card base. Nice and fun and bright. I would definitely enjoy receiving this. Just burnishing that score line again. And the pieces that we're going to be needing for this card are one of these banner pieces with all of the citrus fruits on them. And the sentiment for this one is thanks for being you. So it's a really lovely thank you card to send to someone. So for twine we are going to need uh, 35 centimetres this time. And this time we're going to do something slightly different with the twine. We're actually going to wrap it and tie it around this piece. Now you can wrap this once or twice. You probably could get away with twice, I think, with this amount of twine if you were very adept at bow tying, but I think I'm just going to stick with the one. I'm going to put it slightly to one side. Again, it doesn't really matter where you tie it initially. You can always then shimmy it once you've got your bow tied. Okay, let's try that again so it's actually tight. tying is something that I'm really not very good at and I think what I'm going to do here is go back to my tried and tested method of using two bunny ears rather than trying to do proper grown-up bows as I like to call them to just make two loops and pull them together like so going to shimmy this around a little bit so it's in a position that I'm happy with. And again, I'm sorry if you can hear Ruby in the background. She's very unhappy that I'm sat here and not paying attention to her. Cut off the tail from there. And with this, I'm just going to pop some dimensionals onto the back. So you can actually use your dimensionals to anchor your twine and do some double duty on here for you. Pop the backs off those. And then on this one we're going to aim slightly over to the left. like so. So there's our base. And then I'm going to pop some more dimensionals onto the back of our sentiment. And put this sort of central in the banner underneath the bow that we tied and we're going to use three, uh, no, five sequins on this one. someone's day. On to our next card then. So we're taking this pretty vase. This is in our new in colour, just jade. 
Okay, and I'm going to burnish that score line on the base. And for this piece, we're going to be using uh, the sentiment is going to be the round just a note. The decorative piece that we're going to use is this, the leaves and the citrus slices. And we're also going to use the banner piece in navy. I'm just going to pop that out of its backing sheet. For this one we need a 63 centimetre piece of twine. Now this card is actually a landscape orientation, sway around. And the first thing that we're going to do is put the base piece on. So again, just using some dimensionals here. Just to give some height and a bit of interest. And it helps your card look less flat, certainly. Get this nice and central on your card so line your card base up with your grid paper so you know that your card base is nice and straight eyeball this and then once you're happy pop it down so we're just going to take the twine and wrap it on the inside of the card and all the way over the front and we're going to double loop it so around both layers twice, like so. And then tie ourselves a bow over on the right hand side. So just make sure your twine is roughly where you want it to be. You can always adjust it later, but you want to make sure it has the right sort of tension on the twine. And we're just going to tie a nice bow, hopefully, <laughs> in here. Just like so. And again, just pull your loops until you're happy with them. I'm just going to snip the tail ever so slightly. I'm just going to pull this round to the side a little bit more. And then using the Knight of Navy piece, we're going to pop this then over the middle. So we'll put a couple of dimensionals onto the back of here. get this roughly centered so it's center on the banner and also centered over that twine that we've just wrapped around the card just like so and then we're going to pop some dimensionals across the back of here and because this is going to sit in the middle on this you only need to put dimensionals across the middle you don't need to worry about the two free edges so I'm just gonna pop this down so I can make sure that I'm working across the center just pop two dimensionals on there and then position this in the center of the banner like so and then the last thing for this card is just three sequins <laughs> cute one just a note a nice way to say hi to a friend let them know you're thinking of them even though probably you can't quite see them at the moment so the last card then that we're putting together uses this base which is in garden green we are also going to be using 
this square background piece and the sentiment for this one is a way to go so I'm just going to pop this out of the backing sheet this also uses the last of the navy banner pieces that we've got left And then we're going to be needing 33 centimetres of twine for this one. Okay, so first things first, as always, fold and then score your card base. And again, this is a landscape card, so we're going to be turning it this way. And then first of all, I'm going to pop on this die cut, uh, sorry, stamped and printed piece. A couple of dimensionals on the back and again I like to pull these in slightly away from the corners it just means they'll be nicely hidden on your card front they won't sort of peek out of the edges and it helps to give your card a nice polished look in the finished product so we're going to pop in this centered top to bottom and over onto the left hand side of the card uh, once you're happy with how it's lined up, you can just pop that down. And the next piece we're going to put on is our navy banner piece. And I'm actually going to pop this one on just with glue dots this time. Again, you can adjust this for yourself if you would prefer it to have more dimension and be popped up further. You can always use the dimensionals. Or if you prefer a slightly flatter card, or if you are looking to post this card and you don't want it to be too puffy in the envelope then you can flatten your layers slightly to help make that easier. It's one of the beauties of making your own cards. You kind of get to decide how it goes together. So I'm just going to line this up across here and pop it in place once I'm happy with its position. And then the way to go will just sit straight over the top of that for us. And this time I will put dimensionals on this. So I'm actually going to center this onto the blue banner so it will be slightly over the edge of the printed piece in the background and this says hello from my lovely cat Kimba who's come to see us getting all the visits today okay another air bow for us here so again tail on one side create your loop <laughs> Hi. and then pull the bow into place and then adjust the loops and tails to be the size you want them to be. And with this sort of twisted twine, where you've got two colours twisted together, when you're pulling the tails back in, I find it actually helps if you pinch the knot before you pull. It stops them from twisting quite so much. They will still twist slightly, but if you just pull them on their own, you will find you end up with sort of a spiral rather than a loop. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. And I shall pop a couple more glue dots on the back to hold it in place. So same as before, I'm just going to put one glue dot on either side of the knot. Like so. This is where it really helps to have nails, so you can pick off the backing. Just pull those backing pieces off. I'm going to use my snips again just to help to get this into place. And I'm going to pop this under both of these layers, so right under this onto the base of the card. Like so. 
And now that it's on, I'm just going to slightly snip the tails. So I'm happy with the length. And then the last piece for this is a couple more sequins. And I'm going to use three on this card. <laughs> way to go. So here are the five finished cards from this kit. As you can see this is a really cute kit. I love the bright colours in here, the additional stamping um, around the printed images I think really gives it a nice bold modern but still slightly whimsical feel to it and the colours um, are just really great for sending a bright positive note to a friend to let them know that you're thinking of them. If you're interested in buying this kit or any of the tools I've used today there will be links in the description below, straight to my store, so you can do that. I will also have a link there if you wish to order a catalogue, if you are based in the UK and you don't currently have a Stamping Up demonstrator, I'd be happy to send out a copy of any of our current catalogues to you. Just pop me a message and I'll get that straight into the post to you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I do hope you enjoy putting together this Simply Citrus all-inclusive card kit. Bye-bye!